Hi everybody, welcome back to Paint Along Kids. My name is Liv and today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make this beautiful, vibrant African sunset. I've taught this painting to children ages four to 11 in the last couple weeks and each and every one of them turned out beautiful. I know it looks a little hard or it looks very intricate, but I promise you when we break it down step by step, it's actually pretty easy and it's a lot of fun. So yeah, if uh, you are interested in this, but you want a different animal, you can totally add a different animal. Um, I've had children do it with hyenas, um, elephants, lions, cheetahs. There was a rhinoceros in there. Um, make it your own, okay? And I'd love to see how they turn out. If you do make one, have your family send it to me, have a parent send it to me. I wanna see it. So without further ado, enjoy. All right, guys, so to start our painting, we're going to need these three colors. We're gonna add some more colors later, but this is what we need to start. You need a red, an orange, and a yellow. And you're gonna to wanna to have a couple different brushes. You're gonna to wanna to have a big brush that makes it easy to apply color all over the canvas. A smaller brush for the fine details whenever we get to um, the giraffe or whatever animal you're going to do, just to be able to paint that really precisely. And also for our tree and our branches and our trunk, this smaller brush is gonna come in handy. And then you could use the smaller brush for the leaves if you don't have another type. But if you have a brush that's kind of stipply on top, a little bit rougher, that's gonna work really well for leaves. So anyways, those are the brushes uh, that I suggest you have on hand, but if you don't have them, that's okay. I'm sure you can make it work with something else. But yeah, so the first step is to find a circle. So I just took a circle, something circular. I think it was like a little bowl that I had. I turned it upside down and I made a sun circle. Um, and yeah, so I traced that, I cut it out, and then I put tape on the back. And then you're gonna wanna tape it down on your canvas, kind of probably about middle, maybe a little bit under middle on whatever side you want. You could even put it in the middle but put that somewhere in the sky area. We do this because when we go over it with paint, we don't want it to go where the circle is because that's gonna be our guide for our sun later. So put that down, make sure it's nice and stuck to the canvas. If you need help from an adult for this, then I'm sure that mom and dad will help you or whatever friend or other adult you have around. Um, yeah, so jumping right into it, we're gonna start with the red. So I want you to cover the whole top of the canvas with red, and you're gonna come down halfway on the sun. And you see how I went over the sun, the sticker we laid down? Totally fine, because we're gonna, whenever we peel that away, it's gonna leave a nice circle without any paint underneath. So you wanna make sure you get right to those edges. And also, I taped down some regular paper under my canvas just so I don't get my table all painty and dirty because this paint can be a pain to get off. So let's just keep coloring that in. Take your time and make sure it's nice and red. You don't see any white pieces from the canvas showing through. You might have to do a few layers and that's totally fine. Sometimes you have to do that if the paint is not as thick. So yeah. I think African sunsets are so cool and pretty. The colors always just are so vibrant and they always pop. And I really think that they look really great when I see photos of animals against an African sunset. So if you have to hold down your circle that we taped there, just to get it to be precise, go for it, push it down. Make sure you're getting all the way to the edge of your canvas. You can even do the sides of your canvas if you want. I'm not gonna do that today to save time, but if you guys want to take the time and paint all the way to the bottom of the canvas, you could totally do that. And then it will look really nice if you hang it on your wall. You can also put it in a frame if you don't do the sides, um, and that would be cool as well. All right. Just 
take your time and really make sure that that's nice and saturated with color. We really want that vibrant sunset look to really shine and pop. So back and forth, by the way, boys and girls. So sometimes I see people doing this and while that's okay, if you like that look, I really do suggest going back and forth with your brush instead of kind of like scribbling with it because it makes it look more natural and blended, which kind of for a sky sometimes is a nice look. Just makes everything look more cohesive and put together. All right. Make sure that you really got all around your sun all the way in, you don't see any white showing. It's okay if a little pink gets under the tape or the, the sun um, piece that we put there because we're gonna go over it later with white. But what we don't want is for white to show outside the circle because then our sun won't be perfectly circle and we'll lose our guide. All right, I see a couple more spots where I just wanna, <laughs> this is why we put down paper. I am a messy painter. I don't know about you guys, but I usually have more paint on me than the canvas at the end of painting. All right, so if you have put on a layer and you feel like you could use more, then you can keep adding more. If it's not really working for you, sometimes you have to let paint dry before you add another layer and it will work a lot better. So if it's not really layering well and you're not getting a more saturated look, let it dry for a little bit and go back in with your paintbrush after and add another layer. But if you are ready for the next step and your sky is nice and red, then go ahead and rinse that brush really, really good. Dry it off. Make sure we get all that red out because we're going into orange now and we want it to be nice and orange and not red. So dry that brush, get it nice and clean. And then we're gonna take that same brush and we're gonna do the same thing with orange. So I want you to start at the bottom and work your way all the way up into that red. And when you get to the red, take your brush and watch what I'm doing here. I'm blending it up a little into the red and the red down into the orange because we don't want it to be a straight line. We don't want it to just be like red, boop, orange. You want it to kind of look like blended and soft. So just make sure we're getting all around that circle, all around that sun, nice and saturated and blend together that line. And you can go up a little into the red with orange. You can go down a little with a little red into the orange. Just make it look natural. There we go. And then if you feel like you have a lot of red on your brush from that, <laughs> you can rinse it again and clean it because down here we just want orange. So that's just gonna be like a transition into the bright orange. So down here, nice and bright orange. Take your time and let it get really saturated. Make sure you don't see any white. It's gonna be really, really pretty. This painting kind of looks really hard, I think. Like I've done it with children before and they always say, I can't do that. And when you break it down, you really can. You can do way more than you think. It's just following the steps and believing in yourself. And I think you'll be pretty impressed with how it turns out because everyone I've done this with, it always turns out amazing. They do such a good job. All right, 
There we go. I think I'm happy with the amount of orange I got to cover the canvas. I don't see any more white. So I'm gonna move on to my next step. So take your time. If your sky blending doesn't look like mine, totally fine because it's so nice when everyone's art is unique and everyone has their own little style, but this is just a base. So if you wanted to make the sky look a little different, go for it, totally your painting. And I'd love to see what you come up with. So rinse your brush now. We're onto our last color for that background. So make sure it's nice and rinsed, like really good. We don't want any orange or any red left over because we're gonna go into yellow next. And we kind of want it to be a bright yellow around the sun, just to get that sun glow. So make sure your brush is nice and dry. And then, this part's pretty fun. You're gonna go over the sun and you're just gonna drag some yellow all around your sun and blend it out because this is just a glow from our sun setting and it's just kind of illuminating those imaginary clouds around it. <laughs> so really back and forth, like I showed you before, nice and yellow. You can use a little extra paint here if you need it to not go so much into the red and the orange. It's nice if it blends a little bit, but you do want that yellow to show because it's gonna really pop. So all around the sun and all back and forth. Up here a little on top of the sun. Take your time with this and get it to a point where you think it looks really pretty and you're happy with it and it looks good. You look like you have a sun glow going on and then you can stop and wait for the next step. You can have less yellow than me. You can have more yellow than me. Totally up to you in your painting and what your vision is for this. I think it looks really cool when everyone does a little different. So just the important thing to remember is no, scr like no scratching the paint back and forth. You really wanna blend it. Just wanna go back and forth, not scrunch or scribble back and forth. As a general rule for backgrounds, back and forth is a little better because it just gives you a smooth background. And then you can add your textures on top of that background and it'll really look cool. All right. Cool, cool. Now, after you get it to a place where you like it, and you're happy with the way it looks, I'm pretty happy with mine. We're going to rinse our brush and let it dry completely. So you wanna let this background dry. So you can go do something else, you can have a snack, watch your favorite show, and then we will meet back here and peel it off and do the rest of the painting. So yeah, let that sit. You don't have to peel the sun yet because it could get kind of messy. You could end up smudging your work. So I would just wait, let it dry completely, and then we'll do that in the next step. So I'll see you guys soon. All right guys, so we're back and our painting is dry. So what we're going to need for the rest of the painting is black. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the sun. So for the sun, you want to use mostly white, which I know is surprising because a lot of people believe the sun should be yellow. And while we're gonna add a little bit of yellow to that, we don't want to do an overwhelming amount of yellow because the sun actually is pretty bright. It glows and if you look at the sun, which you shouldn't do, so don't. <laughs> But if you did, it would be really white. I don't want you guys to look into the sun though because you would definitely probably hurt your eyes and we don't want that. But the sun really has like a very light, light color to it. So it glows this white sort of light. And we just, see how I just added a dot of yellow into my white? 
That's what we want. We want it to be super, super pale white. Yellow, sorry. Super duper pale yellow. So I don't know if you guys can really see that, but it's just this really, really light tinge of yellow mixed into that white. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set that aside. I'm gonna get rid of these so they're not in my way. And we're going to peel off our circle. Boop. So you can see that that is kind of not perfect anymore. There was some paint that got inside. Totally fine though, because now we have a guide to go off of. And I'm just gonna set this over there out of the way. Okay. I can see where mine isn't quite dry yet, but I'm gonna try to make it work because I gotta go to work soon. So I'm gonna see if I can make it work. You should wait till it's completely dry though. <laughs> it will be easier, I promise. Um, yeah, and I'm using a really tiny brush for this one, the one where I can get lots of detail. Yeah, that's not, it's not quite dry enough for me. Take my time. Make sure that it's dry when you do it because we really don't want to mix in a bunch of red and orange into our sun. What you're gonna do is that you're gonna follow that outline that we made with the circle and just try to keep your sun as circular, circular as possible. So color that all in. You might need a few coats just to make sure it's nice and saturated. You don't see any white or red through from the out outer layers where the red might have gotten under, the orange. Really just want this to be popping light yellow. No other colors in there. If you get a little color on your brush and you don't want it to smear all over your sun, just give your brush a good rinse and wipe and keep going. See, by having the yellow so so pale so light really gives the effect that our sun is glowing which is exactly what we're going for we wanted to really show that that sun is setting and glowing and then we're going to have our animals in the foreground here it's going to be like backlighting for our animals so it's going to look really pretty when we're done so take your time on this and really try to make it smooth as, po as smooth as possible. If you get some paint like I am, getting some orange mixed in because mine wasn't dry, you probably won't have this problem because you're gonna let yours dry all the way. Um, just make sure that you're rinsing your brush if you get a little color on there because we don't want to smear that color into our sun because the sun doesn't really have a bunch of red and orange in it. It's just this marvelous light color. Take your time and make it as smooth as possible. You might need to let it dry a little and then go back in and do another layer on top. I'll probably end up doing that because mine isn't uh, very saturated at this point. So make sure that we have it all the way to the edge. There we go. Got a little water there, just wipe that away. I'm gonna let that dry. If yours was completely dry, you shouldn't have any problem getting it to cover, but because my edges were a little bit wet still, I have to let it dry a bit more before I go right into those edges because I don't wanna make it all messy with orange. <laughs> and I keep dripping also onto this. All right, so that's that. And you can take more time on your sun than I just did. 
but I am in a bit of a rush right now. Um, so I'm gonna keep going. So I'm gonna go grab the giraffe I printed and I'm gonna show you something. All right, so before this video, I grabbed a piece of cardstock or like sort of like a thick paper. If you don't have cardstock, you can use regular paper. And if you don't have paper at all to print out an animal, um, then you can try to draw it freehand, which is super ambitious and I know you can do it. Um, so if you don't have a giraffe, um, sorry, if you don't have a printer to do this, then go ahead and try it freehand. I think it will work. You can look at your computer and draw along with like a YouTube video or you could find a photo of an animal on Google and just try your best. But what I did is I found a silhouette and I'll link the silhouette to this giraffe in the description below. And I just printed it out and then I carefully cut it. You might need an adult to help you cut it out. Um, yeah, but what you're gonna do, is you're gonna put it down and then you're gonna trace around it. It also doesn't have to be a giraffe. It can be any animal silhouette. Um, I have had children use elephants, rhinoceroses, lions, cheetahs, um, a hyena. <laughs> so really any silhouette of an African animal that is your favorite African animal. I'll link a few below that I've used with other children and um, you can feel free to use those or you can just go on Google and search African animal silhouette and there will be a bunch that will come up. So I'm going to get some tape tape along the back of this animal in different places. I'm gonna stick it down to my canvas so that I can trace around it without it moving around. You want the tape to be kind of skinny so that it doesn't show on any of the edges of your animal. You don't want it to overlap the outline. So you don't want it to go like past the animal because then it's gonna be harder for you to trace it. And you'll have to go around a bunch of tape and that won't be very easy probably. So when you're done that, you can just set that to the side. And we're actually gonna start with our tree. So your sun, if your sun's to the side, you can kind of do it. If your sun is in the middle and you want your tree to go over the sun, then I recommend letting your sun dry completely. I just threw my paintbrush, I'll be right back. I recommend letting your sun dry completely. Um, that way, if you wanna put some branches over top of your sun, then it's not going to smudge and be all messy, okay? So let it dry completely if you have the time. I'm only going forward because I'm running out of time. Um, but yeah, I want you guys to have the basic tools. So you can put your tree in the middle. You can put your tree over here. You can put it over here. I'm putting mine over here because I kind of like the way that that looks. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with a trunk not too thick. I'm gonna show you how to do an African tree. So you have your tree trunk, and then at the top, you kinda of wanna do like a Y. So I'm going, you're gonna do this Y, and your branches are gonna come out, and take your time and fill those in. You can use a lot of paint for this if you, it helps if you have more paint on your brush because it helps you get a stronger edge. See how that's not, I don't know if you can see very well, but it's not very smooth on the end and that's because I didn't have a lot of paint on my brush. But the more paint I add and slide my brush along, the smoother my trunk gets. It's easier to make that like straight line when you have a little more paint on your brush. Just be careful not to drip it on the rest of your painting or else you might be a little sad. <laughs> if that happens, you can go over it again with the color, like orange if it goes on the orange or red. Um, but it's easier if you just try not to let it drip in the first place. So then you're gonna do some branches coming out of those two. Some smaller branches here and there. can do a branch up here, going out. You don't want to put the branches going down very much because actually the African trees aren't really, 
their, br their branches and their leaves are more on top. And that's what I think gives it that really nice like African-y look. See, this is if you want to go over your sun any, this is where it's really good to have it dry. Because you can see where I dragged it a little bit there and it kind of got smudgy. Which isn't what we really want to happen, but... So take your time. Your branches don't have to be in the same places as mine. Every tree is unique and different, and that's what's going to make this your own painting very signature to you. All right, guys. So when you feel like you have enough branches and you feel happy with what you see, I'm just going to add a little more. Now we're gonna to get to the fun part. This is going to be the leaves. So you could use that same smaller brush if you want to, but I'm gonna to switch to that stipply brush we talked about at the beginning with a little like rough end, not very smooth, because that's just gonna to help to give it more of a leafy feel. So grab some black and start stippling only along the top. If you look at African trees, what really helps them look African, I guess, or they have a signature kind of look where they just have like these leaves on top, like so. So you really just want to keep them up here, not down here. You want that sunset to, sunset to show through there. That's going to give it that African vibe, that sunsetty vibe. So just stipple your leaves on top. Doesn't have to look like mine. It could be a totally different shape. Some, I remember one child did like a half of his tree was dead um, and it didn't have any leaves in that part and it actually ended up looking really cool. So um, make it your own. Do what you think would be really fun and what you think would look cool. I'm going to go really careful over this part because my sun's not dry. <laughs> and just add some leaves. There we go. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty cool. It's looking like a tree to me. <laughs> and it's okay if you see a little bit of different colors. If you see the sunset shining through, totally fine because you know, leaves aren't all together all the time. Sometimes there's like light shining through and that just adds to the painting. So yeah. Now for the next step, we're gonna clean off that brush, set it to the side, and I'm gonna grab that giraffe, and I am going to stick him right here. And like I said before, you're gonna want your sun to be dry if your stuff is going over it. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to let it dry right now, so make sure your sun is dry. Mine isn't, and unfortunately, that's just the way it has to be for me today but press down your animal where you want it. You want him near the bottom. It doesn't matter if he's touching the very bottom. In fact, you wanna leave a little space because we're gonna add ground at the bottom later, okay? So place your animal. I'm gonna go get a pencil and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So another way to do this painting, if you don't wanna trace around the animal, you could just glue down a piece of paper that you've cut out and that would be really fun. Um, but if you wanna paint him, then I recommend taping this down. And when you have him where you want him, you're gonna trace his body. So hold down that, that piece of paper right to the canvas tight and trace around him carefully, right at the edge of that paper that we printed. Take your time with this, because it's a little tricky. You wanna make sure that you're getting it really, really accurate. Or else your silhouette might look a little funny. Just take your time and trace around him, pressing down everywhere you go so the paper is tight to the canvas. That will help you get a more accurate drawing. And if you find this too hard, then you can ask for an adult's help. And I'm sure that they would love to help you. So pressing down. And tracing. You know, um, whenever I did this with other children, I actually did this last week with other children, 
they taught me something I didn't know, which is that giraffes actually have purplish black tongues. And I was pretty surprised. I did not know that. But when I Googled it, it was in fact true that giraffes have purple black tongues, which is kind of funny. <laughs> they look pretty funny whenever you look at their tongues. All right. I gotta be careful here because my paint's not dry. Hopefully yours will be dry if you wait it like you should. It will make it much easier for you. All right. And I'm gonna finish tracing this and then I'll show you what we do after that, okay? All right, now that that's all traced, you can lift up your silhouettes, the paper gently off of your canvas, and you should have a little print. And that's just gonna make it so much easier for you to paint in this giraffe and have it looking proportional. But like I said, if you don't have um, a printer available to you, you could totally do this without a printer and just try to freehand it. And I think that would go really well. Like it would be fine. You could totally do it, I believe in you. And you don't have to do a giraffe, you could do any other animal that your heart desires. You could do a rhino, a zebra, you name it. So now we're just gonna take our tiniest brush that we have and we're gonna carefully draw in that giraffe and follow the outline ever so carefully so that we don't smudge it or make any messes. And you can color them in. And it's gonna look like the silhouette of an animal standing in the sunset. Super duper pretty. So just take your time and really get him in all black. Color him all black. Do the whole thing, whatever animal you chose. Make sure that there's no orange showing through or yellow or any, any color in the background. You don't want any color showing through. There we go, so that's looking pretty good. Make sure you don't see any other colors peeking through. And we can go ahead and do our last step. Good job guys, if you've made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back because that was awesome. You Like it's not as hard as it looks, right? If you break it down step by step, very easy to do stuff like this and it's so fun okay so the next step is that we're gonna wherever your animals feet are you can start by putting the ground there so don't leave any space between you don't want to see any orange because then it looks like your animals jumping into the air unless you want them to be then go for it but just under those feet I want you to start drawing the ground and if you did the sides of your canvases, then you can do the bottom as well, do it black. So it looks all cohesive and all, like it's all meant to be together. And then you're gonna bring that ground across the whole canvas. So it looks like the earth is under the tree. You have your ground under the tree and under the giraffe or whatever animal you chose. If you did a lion or, you know, a zebra, a leopard, maybe you wanna have them standing on rocks or something, go for it. That would be cool. It doesn't have to be flat ground, but I feel like maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think giraffes do much rock climbing. What do you think? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they're kind of clumsy, I think. 
Excellent. All right, guys, my video cut me out when I was in the middle of finishing that painting. But basically, you're just going to finish the ground, put it all the way across. And if you did the bottom of your canvas um, and you did the sides of your canvas, make sure you bring the black down at the bottom underneath and on the sides where the ground is so that it all looks like it belongs together. And if you hang it up on a wall, um, it's going to look like 3D and like from all sides. Um, yeah, so guys, if you did this painting and you are happy and you had fun painting with me, then leave me a comment. Um, and also if you feel like sharing your art, I'd love to see it. So send it to me, have your parents send it to me or something. And I would absolutely love to see your creations. So until next time, have a great, wonderful summer and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. All right guys, wasn't that fun? I bet it's looking pretty cool. After work, when I came home, I fixed my sun and I really made those lines around really smooth because I was in a bit of a rush earlier and I wasn't happy with how I left it. So I went back and I smoothed out my sun and I made it nice and round and I'm gonna hang this in my bedroom because I really like it. So yeah, thank you for painting with me and stay tuned for the next video. Bye for now.